This video will go through the different types of indirect restorations that can be made for patients. All restorations do the same thing. They replace missing tooth structure and they restore the function of the teeth. Depending on how much tooth structure is lost depends on what type of restoration the dentist will recommend. We'll start off with an inlay. Inlays fit into the grooves and fissures of the teeth. They're quite small. They're commonly made out of porcelain or ceramic, but sometimes they'll also be made out of precious metals like gold, platinum, and palladium. They fit into the fissures of the teeth. So they'll follow the grooves and fissures of the tooth. They do not go on to the tips or the cusps. The next restoration is an FCC, which is a full cast crown. Full cast crowns are metallic in appearance. There is no porcelain baked to the outer surface of the crown. What's nice about these is they can be made thinner, so less tooth structure needs to be reduced, although you notice that it does sit and cover the entire tooth. So FCCs are fully metallic, full cast crown. This one happens to be gold in appearance, but depending on the metal content, they may also be silver in appearance. Most are high noble, which means that they have a higher content of precious metals. The next restoration is a porcelain fused to metal crown. When you look at a porcelain fused to metal crown, it still has a metal substructure. The metal substructure makes it strong, but for aesthetic purposes, we have the lab bake porcelain over the metallic substructure. If you notice, the buccal side, facial if it were an anterior tooth, is completely porcelain. That's all that we see. When you flip it over to the lingual side, you will see this thin collar of metal showing. So PFMs are very common, porcelain fused to metal. They combine the strength of the metallic restoration with the aesthetic looks of porcelain or ceramic. The next one here is a traditional bridge. A bridge replaces a missing tooth. This one is a three unit bridge also happens to be PFM, porcelain, fused to metal. The parts of the bridge that attach to natural teeth are called abutments, and the portion of the bridge, the unit of the bridge that replaces the missing tooth, is called a pontic. These are fused together, they're all connected. If you notice how reduced the teeth are to accommodate this restoration, so any restoration that's made has to be able to fit over the existing teeth while not impeding natural function. It needs to feel normal and function normally, like the patient's natural tooth did. On this bridge example, this abutment on the central incisor has a cast post and core. If you notice, compared to the other abutment, how greatly reduced the tooth structure is, a bridge would not be able to be secured to that abutment very easily. So the operator can place a post and core, and that will act as surface area for the cement to adhere to. The next restoration is a veneer. Veneers are typically porcelain or ceramic. They replace the facial, incisal, and sometimes a portion of the lingual surface of the teeth. So I'm going to move that so it doesn't fall. So this is what your veneer looks like. There is no metal on the veneer. It's cemented just like a traditional crown or bridge. The 
because it doesn't have any metal on it, it's a much more aesthetic, nicer looking option for the patient. The next restoration here is an implant. We'll cover that in a different section, but you can see through the clear window you have the implant that's embedded into the bone. It's osseointegrated. And then the restoration is built on top. This one happens to have an abutment with the crown cemented in place. The next restoration is kind of unique. You don't see these too often. This is called a resin retained bridge, also called a Maryland bridge. Maryland bridges replace the missing tooth, but instead of the abutments completely covering the adjacent teeth for support, they have these little wings. This one happens to be all porcelain, but these wings could be metal. You could have a PFM Pontic with metal wings that attach. They're retained by a resin cement on the abutments. The great thing with Maryland bridges is that if you notice, the buccal or facial surfaces of the teeth are not reduced. These are not touched when the doctor prepares the teeth. So when the crown is placed, excuse me, the bridge is placed, the patient still has their natural teeth for appearances. And the wings attach to the occlusal or lingual surfaces to secure the bridge in place. So that is a Maryland bridge. Maryland bridges are typically only done in areas where there is less stress typically on anterior teeth, and sometimes you will see it on premolars. But molars have a high stress area, so Maryland bridges don't hold up as well in those higher stress-bearing areas of the mouth. The last restoration we have here is an onlay. Remember we had an inlay that fit into the grooves of the teeth, Onlays cover at least one cusp. This one on this model happens to cover all four cusps. But if you notice, the tooth itself is not as reduced as a tooth that receives a full crown. So the patient still has natural tooth structure, some natural tooth structure on the buckle and some natural tooth structure on the lingual. So onlays sit on and cover at least one or more cusps, and they are cemented in place. This one, since it covers quite a bit of the tooth, sometimes these will be called three-quarter crowns. Three-quarter crowns typically cover the lingual, occlusal, and part of the buccal surface. You know, just the very um, incisal third of the buccal surface. So sometimes you might hear the term three-quarter crown. Three-quarter crowns will cover the lingual and the occlusal and just sometimes the incisal third of the buccal surface. Another bridge that I don't have an example of to show you physically is called a cantilever bridge. The traditional bridges, this one happens to be three units, traditional bridges have abutments on the distal side and on the mesial side. That way there's equal support for that pontic and that will help evenly distribute the stresses from chewing. Now sometimes the patient will not have an abutment on both sides. If that's the case, a doctor may still opt to do a bridge, but only connect it on one side. So this is called a cantilever bridge. It's not a great option for high stress areas, but it is a good option for lower stress areas, such as the anterior region of the mouth. You can think of this like a diving board. 
when you jump on the end of a diving board, it causes the board to flex. Now, this is made out of metal and or porcelain and ceramic, but it still causes a lot of stress on that single abutment. Sometimes they'll even extend it out so you have two abutments on one side, but there still is no support on the other side. So that is called a cantilever bridge.